Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach, and this is my little internet show about white water stuff. And in this episode, I want to talk about the Petzl Tiblock. I'll show what that does in a second. A lot of people have suggested that I talk about it or suggest it as something to use and setting a mechanical advantage. And I bought one and I have some thoughts about it. I'm going to share them with you. But before I do, I want to be very clear I am not a swift water rescue instructor. I've taken some classes, I have some real life experience. But before listening to me, you should you should just stop listening to this. This is I'm the wrong person to listen to my advice about this. Stop the show and go book yourself a swift water rescue class with a real qualified instructor. If you continue listening to me, you could be doing something completely dangerous and idiotic, and 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 you've been warned. All right. So with that, let's talk about the tip block. Uh, first of all, historically, if we want to attach, do like a three to one system, and attach a rope to another rope, we use pressics. We use a pressic loop. I really like Sterling Auto, Auto Blocks. You tie a little pressic knot. It's pretty cool. Or no, it's not. It's not. It's a hitch. It's not a knot. It's a hitch. See, I have no idea what I'm talking about. You shouldn't listen to me. It's a pressic hitch. And then you attach your your carabiner with your pulley. And this thing can hold tight, right? It's, it's a great solution. I really like Prusix. But a lot of people for this same thing have suggested using a tib lock. And what a tib lock is, it's this little thing. It's about 50 bucks, Petzl makes it. And it has teeth in it that attach to the rope. And then you take a carabiner here. Look how easy it is, no knots. It's just a piece of metal. Put the carabiner over it like this. See, not that big of a deal. And then attach your pulley to that carabiner. So it's kind of like a metal thingy that can be used instead of a prusik. In this example, I mean, the prusik is needed for other stuff. But now you pull like this and it's pretty tight. Like it's on there really tight and it's locked in. Super easy, super light, super small. And a lot of people love this thing and think it's brilliant. And I, it's not made for rafting. It's made for, I believe, ascending ropes for climbers. It's like a backup emergency ascension system. And some river guides or just boaters are like, no, this is brilliant. Let me buy this thing instead of Prusix. And I get that. I like stuff too. I like metal things. I like gear. It's called Gear Garage. And so, you know, I would buy this too because I'm like, this is a super techie thing. But I'm going to say this is not something we should be using for a swift water rescue. This is my opinion. Again, not a swift water instructor. Press pause, press stop, go somewhere else if you want real information. This is just my opinion. I feel like this shouldn't be used. I'm going to give you a few reasons why I think a Prusik is way better. First of all, I Googled this thing, and if you pull it to failure, it tears the sheath off. This is what I saw on a YouTube video, so again, it could be wrong. It tears the sheath, uh, and, it, and it comes off that way, which I guess is pretty cool, where when you pull a Prusik really tight, it might slip or burn the rope. So... You know, do you want to tear the sheath and burn the rope? You know, your call. Theoretically, people say that this will slip and not burn the rope, but in my experience, it pretty much always burns the rope. Again, not a swift water rescue instructor. So, you know, I think it, but what it does isn't entirely clear, right? It's super strong. It holds onto the rope really tight. Personally, I would rather have this fail before I destroy my haul line, right? Haul lines are expensive. You typically only have one of them. And so when you're pulling on this to failure, this is not gonna break, you're gonna break your haul line. Whereas if you pull a pressic to failure, the pressic's gonna break before you destroy your haul, haul line. Again, haul lines are, you have one of them for the trip, maybe two, doubtfully, and they're expensive. The bigger issue I have though, is I really feel like we should all be using equipment that is common knowledge, that everybody knows what it does and how to use it based on similar training. Nobody trains on the tip lock. You might have one and know how to use it, and that's super cool, but you may not be the person who's there setting it up. And even if you are, you may not be the person taking it down. And so, you know, I would only have this if everybody on your team that you're with, and your team changes, I'm guessing, knows how this works. Because you're adding an element to the system that somebody doesn't understand. Whereas if, and it's kind of a cool thing, by the way, just so you know, it like, it can move it up really easy, right? Boom. So it, it locks that way and it goes up and it's locked in place. That's kind of cool. Where with a Prusik, you kind of have to unloosen it and then move it up, for those of you that know what I'm talking about. So, I mean, it's super cool and techy, but I, I, I'm good with mechanical stuff when I get this. If you just showed me how to put this on, I kind of figured out. I might put the, pr the pulley the wrong way, though. You're supposed to put the pulley like this. I might make a mistake with that training. Whereas most of us that learn how to boat, whether we learn from a friend of ours, 
an official class, the internet, which you shouldn't do. Don't listen to the internet for safety stuff. Even my channel. We all learn how to handle pressings and we learn the ins and outs of them. And so I feel like it's a common tool. And because this has other uses, it gets used on the hall light in here. It gets used on the break of a three to one down there. You could, you could do other things with it. It's just a very ubiquitous piece of gear. And I hope ubiquitous is the right word there. I'm pretty sure that it is. It's a piece of gear that can be used for a lot of different things where this is sort of a single use thing. And again, this is like 50 bucks. This is like 10, right? A pre-sewn, awesome sterling Prusik is 10 bucks. So you can buy five of these for the price of that. So those are my thoughts. I could be wildly wrong here. A lot of you have left comments saying, use a Tiblock, here's why you should use it, here's why you shouldn't use it. If I'm wrong here, point it out. Like I'm trying to learn here, I bought it, so obviously I'm intrigued, right? But but my opinion after just playing with it for 10 minutes, after receiving it in the mail from, from REI, is that, yeah, no, it's an interesting thing, but not something I wanna use for safety. So I, if you think I'm wrong, let me know. If you think I'm right, give me, give me a little props here, because that way my ego doesn't get hurt too bad when people are beating me up in the comments. So those are my thoughts on the Petzl Tiblock for River Rafting Rescue. Uh, if you have a second, hit that like button, think about subscribing, leave a comment, say hello, and uh, yeah, that's it. See you in the next episode, thanks.